Give that a minute and it'll load. Thanks. You got it? Yeah, they just, because the game ended. They the start. game ended really quick. They got them, it was like five minutes. That's why we record in the SD card. Yeah. You, you record in the SD card, right? Hey, Carl. Are you set up in OBS? Like, did the camera already come through there? Oh, we gotta. Oh, fuck. You gotta go to source, media source, and then scroll down probably. No, not media or, source here. Oh, cancel. I'll help you. I'll help you. There you go. Just want to make sure that the audio has to come in too. Top of the first inning, and we apologize for some technical delays that we had in this game between the Cangelosi Sparks and Pirates Baseball in the 13U Elite Championship. There's a ground ball from Liam Maroney, the throw to first, and that's a 1-2-3 inning for Pirates Baseball starting pitcher Tommy Georgelos. We'll head to the bottom of the first here on Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everybody. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. For those of you that just want raw footage of your sporting event, but no play-by-play -play or color commentary, you just need us to live stream video from the event over the internet. We will live stream your event on YouTube on our Sports Broadcast Solutions channel. In addition, we also have a dedicated channel on YouTube for live streaming at SBS Livestream. And if you need multiple channels, we can utilize Facebook Livestream and Instagram Live on our channel as well. Options include commercials from your sponsors, professional scoreboard graphics are still available, and of course, yes, pre- and post-game interviews are available as an option if you want. We've been working really hard this whole summer and stuff. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Let SBS broadcast your sporting event. We have experience and can generate excitement and permanent digital memories for your team. Tonight, that time, finally a goal for the Stampede! We have professional videographers using high-definition modern-day cameras, color analysts and play-by-play -play announcers with state-of-the-art, classy graphical scoreboards to keep you updated. Plus, we have commercials to advertise your team, club, or sponsor, and us. Plus, we do pre-game and post-game interviews. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the post-game show brought to you by Marion Central Catholic. My name's Kyle Smith, but my name doesn't matter. These young ladies matter. It's senior night as the Hurricanes win a battle down the stretch, 48 to 46. Hi, I'm Carrie Kramer. Um, I swim 50 breast, uh, 50 free, and 100 back. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out. And be Welcome back. Bottom of the first inning, no score between the Pirates baseball 13U Elite and the Cangelosi Sparks. We'll see the Pirates at the plate for the first time. Tommy Georgelos leading it off. And the first pitch misses low and away from the starting pitcher for the Sparks, Cormac Saunders. Tommy Georgelos, great speed. He's the starting pitcher for the Pirates, but has 55 stolen bases on the year as he takes the ball outside. Ahead in the count here, 2-0. The Pirates won both regular season meetings between these two teams. And the 2-0 pitch misses high and away, so Georgelos in a favorable count to start off. Against the Sparks starter, Cormac Saunders. Here's the 3-0. That misses high, so a four-pitch walk for Tommy Georgelos, and he's aboard with that dangerous speed. 55 steals on the year, wouldn't be surprised to see him going. That brings up Gavin Wilczewski. Right-handed hitter against the righty Saunders.
George Los with a healthy lead. He's going. Pitch is low, and he will be there in time easily. Stolen base number 56 for Tommy Georgelos. And he's already in scoring position. Nobody out in the bottom of the first. For the 13U Pirates, coached by Phil Abrunzio, the third base coach out there. 1-0 swing and a miss from Will Chesky. And we now welcome Kmar, who's doing our color commentary, also technical directing, and he is the hero <laughs> of the night for getting us on the air as that pitch is fouled away. Yeah, thanks, Connor. Yeah, we had uh, the earlier game that just ended the 13 U AAA game ended a little bit late, so they rushed on to get this 13 U Elite team and they had to get things together. So we started you on the stream a little bit late, got everything together though, so <laughs> we're good to go. We're here good in the to go. Of the first, we're on the air now, so that's all that matters. And that game between Wasco and Downers Grove, or Downers Grove went down to the wires. That one was fouled down the left field line. It was a walk-off walk for Wasco to win it in the bottom of the seventh inning. So these teams really didn't get any time to warm up. And you sometimes wonder, how does that affect these teams? You know, they were trying to warm up behind the fence, but mm -hmm. really didn't get their full routine in. Yeah, it's kind of tough when you're waiting for another game to end and you're playing on the same field. A little bit of a disadvantage, and you have the lights out too, so that's another uh, variable at play. Two strikes here for Will Chesky. We'll see how he can protect as Saunders steps off. You have the very dangerous base runner in George Lewis at second base, so you imagine any base hit, he's going to be sent home. He's got a good secondary lead out there too, which is something for the, every pitcher has to worry about the back of their mind. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. Will Chesky way out in front of that off-speed pitch from Saunders. Good pitch selection there from the right-hander. So one away, Georgia Lowe sits second, and Jory Crocker will step in for the Pirates. First pitch misses upstairs, count is at 1-0. Lights are on here in Glen Ellen at the WSBL 13U Elite Championship game. 1-0, that's fouled back. These two teams with some pretty different seasons. The Cangelosi Sparks were a team that struggled in the regular season, but they have really turned it on here in the postseason, making it all the way to the championship. For sure, but also the Pirates are coming in a little bit of a downslope, so you've got two teams that are not playing quite at their best spot, but they're playing for a championship, so you got to throw everything out from that's already happened. Just play this game that's going on right here. Chance to walk away with the ring and a trophy. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. Fly ball deep into center field. That is caught. George Ellis will hustle back to second safely, and there's two down. Tyler Edmondson making the catch out there in center field. That brings up Ronnie Murray for the Pirates with two down, and George Ellis at second base. Cormac Saunders trying to get out of this first inning scoreless after he issued a four-pitch walk to the leadoff man, and the first pitch to Murray is in there for a strike. Saunders with a long look in, comes set, look towards second base, and the pitch, that misses low. Count is at one and one. Uh, we saw Saunders issue that four-pitch walk, but since then he's found some success with the off-speed stuff. 1-1 one, one pitch. That's a fastball. Popped up foul behind home plate. Long run near the first base dugout, and it will just land in foul territory. The count is at 1-2. and two. Plenty of room behind home plate here. Plenty spacious territory, which is good for the base runners too, especially if pitches get past the catcher or in plays like this, you gain another opportunity in an at-bat. It's a deep backstop there, so any ball that gets by, you're going to take a base. Saunders comes ready and the pitch. That misses just low.
Ronnie Murray. A righty-righty matchup against Cormac Saunders, the starter for the Sparks. Here's the pitch. That's upstairs. Full count to Ronnie Murray. Georgelos at second base. Here's the pitch. Murray hits a fly ball softly near the left field line, and this will land foul. Just got out in front of that pitch. We waited back a little bit. I know he's pulling it, trying to find that space, but just a little bit of pause before he swung would have gotten in that run. That's tough on a 3-2 pitch. You're usually thinking fastball to be able to wait back on it, but just a little bit in front of it. Here's the payoff. Strike three called. Cormac Saunders works out of trouble. We're scoreless. Heading to the top of the second here on Sports Broadcast Solutions. Missing your child event just plain stinks. But you don't have to worry about that anymore, thanks to Sports Broadcast Solutions. SBS is a live broadcasting network, as well as covering your on-demand needs, recruiting videos, highlight reels, and much, much more. We can broadcast live to any website, and we also post as much on-demand content as you need. For more information about SBS, check out our website at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Instead of spending hundreds or thousands with all these college recruiting sites, let us put together your college highlight reel. For just a fraction of your potential college scholarship and significantly less than these recruiting services, we got this. In addition, we put together highlight reels for teams, including high school, your club team, or travel team. My teammate gave me a great pass, and I just took it. Other team slashed me, took the opportunity. Saw where the goalie was weak, and I just shot it there. Solon, O'Connor, and Marsh back on defense. And Marsh gets a blowout. We got a breakaway, a 2 on 0 A shot, and his goal! So, 3-3. Three to three. The power play was officially over. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital world. Top of the second inning here in Glen Ellen in the WSBL 13U Elite Championship game. And we apologize for the technical difficulties. There was not much time between the 13U AA Championship game. And so happy to be here with you now, Connor Klingen and Kamar Zerman as well. Uh, so far in, in that first inning, we did see... A lot of strikeouts. A lot of strikeouts. We did. We saw a couple. But, but we also saw a threat going on in that bottom of the first inning by the Pirates. They had a runner at second, but couldn't bring that run along. So now we'll see the Sparks with Tucker Henry leading it off. First pitch is in the dirt. Left-handed batter against the right-hander Tommy Georgelos. What a season Georgelos has had, both pitching and hitting. As here's the 1-0. Swing and a miss at the high heat. Or check that, it's Griffin Arnold at the plate for the Cangelosi Sparks. 1-1, one, one. once again chasing the high heat. And Way out in front of that pitch. You wonder if he'll go up there again on the 1-2. Ooh, up and in there. <laughs> That's upstairs. Yeah, maybe a little too high on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so the count now at two and two to Griffin Arnold. George Ellos comes set. And the pitch. That misses high. So it now runs to a full count. Nice job by Griffin Arnold here, working his way back in this at bat. Payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Third strikeout. Or George Ellos, one away here in the top of the second. Tommy George Ellis led this Pirates team 66 strikeouts on the season coming into tonight. 
Now it'll be Tucker Henry up at the plate for the Cangelosi Sparks. First pitch to Henry. Off-speed pitch, misses upstairs. one -oh. swing and a miss from Tucker Henry. Count is at one and one. Got to wonder if, you know, playing at this late hour if has, a, has an effect. Most of these guys are used to playing in a day game or afternoon games. Playing in a night game like this might have a little bit of a change. 1-1 one, one is low. It's 2-1. And, and, and we had a later start than expected. After 8.30, this game was supposed to start at 8 o'clock due to the previous two championship games running a little bit long. Swing and a miss as Henry went down to a knee. And he's now down to two strikes. The one, two. That misses down low. Count is at two and two. Boy, we've seen George Ellis, or three and two rather, full count. We've seen him mix up his location, mm -hmm. mix up his pitches quite well here early. And he rings up another one, fourth strikeout. For George Ellis, there's two down here in the top of the second. And then right there, he's working the other other side of the plate, working that outside corner. And like you said, if he's mis mixing his pitches up and the locations, as a hitter, you have no idea where, where you're going to have a chance to attack. That brings up Jack Holland. Left-handed bat for the Sparks. Soft ground ball just past George Ellos. The shortstop comes charging, fires to first, and gets him. What a play right there by Jory Crocker to end the top of the second. We'll head to the bottom of the second. No score between the Pirates and the Cangelosi Sparks. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Instead of spending hundreds or thousands with all these college recruiting sites, let us put together your college highlight reel. For just a fraction of your potential college scholarship and significantly less than these recruiting services, we got this. In addition, we put together highlight reels for teams, including high school, your club team, or travel team. Well, my teammate gave me a great pass, and I just took it. The other team slashed me, took the opportunity, saw where the goalie was weak, and I just shot it there. Solon, O'Connor, and Marsh back on defense, and Marsh gets a blowout. We got a breakaway at 2 on 0. A shot, and his goal! So, 3 to 3. The power play was officially over. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital world. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. For those of you who would like to broadcast or live stream your event, or maybe make a highlight tape, but would like a sponsor to fund the event, SBS has a myriad of ways to advertise your sponsor during our broadcasts. We have commercials. We have on-air reads by the announcers. Albatross Physical Therapy and Wellness specializes in pain-free. We have graphics, and we have watermarks. Finally, Sports Broadcast Solutions can create a commercial for you or your sponsor. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. Cangelosi Sparks and Pirates Baseball 13U Elite Championship game in the WSBL. Sean Stolfi will lead it off for the Pirates. First pitch from Cormac Saunders misses low and away. Well, we discussed earlier the story of the season for these two teams. The Sparks struggle in the regular season. The Pirates played some good baseball as the count is now at 2-0. But the Pirates dominated the season series. Mm -hmm. They won the first game 10 to nothing, second game 17 to 6, but you can see early on the Sparks have gained a lot of confidence from their success in the playoffs as this is grounded to third. Throw over to first, good stretch over there, and there's one away. Yeah. Great play there by Griffin Arnold at first base to stretch, stretch that ball out. The throw just nearly pulled him off the bag, but he had a good effort to keep that right foot on the bag, stretch out, maintain the ball, get the out. Long throw from Brendan Keller at third base, and the first pitch to Ryan Dasbach misses low and away. So one down, bottom of the second, still no score in this championship game. The 1-0, fastball for a strike from Saunders. 
Count is at one and one. Now time is called, and there'll be a meeting on the mound here briefly. Maybe a little mix-up on the signals there. Yeah, I mean, you want to you get things taken care of beforehand before things get a little uh, carried away. Still at the early onset of this ball game, and you don't want to be the team that gives up that first go-ahead run. Pitch to Dasbach. That misses low. Great crowd on hand here yeah. out in Glen Ellen for all of these all games. All these games have been well attended for sure. Dosbach takes a high strike. Now two strikes in the count to Dosbach. That misses upstairs. Notice the hitch that Saunders has on the mound, delaying that 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 delivery, maybe that's maybe causing a problem with Ortel. That misses low for ball four. Well, that can be tricky too, picking up the ball, especially in a night game. Mm -hmm. When you have that kind of delivery as a young hitter to have the patience to wait on that delivery, try to see the ball out of his hand. As Noah Sir comes up, Dasbach back into first safely on the pickoff attempt. Sir takes a strike. Another pickoff throw. He's keeping it in the back of his mind. Like I mentioned, you don't want to give up that first run in this game, championship game very key to make sure you limit where these base runners are at all times. We already saw George Ellos with a stolen base. That is well high. Noah Sir with a 888 OPS on the season. 445 on base percentage. That's what you like to see. Mm -hmm. Getting on base plenty. As that's upstairs. So with one out, runner on first, you think about a hit and run here maybe? I would think you want it. Oh. As Sir crushes this to left field, but it is a foul ball. That was close there. The runner didn't get a good secondary lead here, but I, I like the idea of going hit and run. Execution was just off just a little bit on both <laughs> ends, on both the base pass and, and at the plate. But, uh, again, it's all about timing there. You just got a little out in front and pulled it. But that was an excellent Smash off the bat. That's the hardest hit ball we've seen so far in this one. Dasbach with a healthy lead. He's running that pitch in the dirt. He'll get there easily. So Dasbach with the stolen base and a runner in scoring position for the Pirates. Hit and run was kind of on there, but you don't want to swing at a ball that bounces right in front of you. Good aw <laughs> awareness there from Noah Sir holding off on that one. Full count, runner at second with one out, bottom of the second inning. That's upstairs for ball four. Second straight walk issued by Saunders. And the Pirates threatening here in the bottom of the second. So Michael Murphy will step in. Dugout giving him the classic nickname of Murph. <laughs> Anybody who's a Murphy. First pitch, foul tipped into the glove. I think Murphy was a little bit unsure on that pitch. <laughs> thought about not swinging, then he thought, oh, I'll swing at it, and just fell and, behind. And it's not too often, you know, at this level, you see starting off with an off-speed pitch, as here's the 0-1, that's in the dirt, well blocked. The count is at one and one. Saunders looks in for the sign, comes set, and the pitch. That misses high. Good patience from this Pirates team thus far. Absolutely, and I think it's got the Sparks. The Sparks, I was looking defensively, they're, they're playing upwards for the middle for the double play. First baseman's not even bothering to hold the runner here just in case of that double play situation. Pitch to Murphy. 
Popped up right side in foul territory, and that will go over the fence near the parking lot. Luckily, did not hit anybody's <laughs> car. <laughs> Luckily, you know, I think they've got it well spaced out enough with a good amount of foul territory, but that's always a danger yep. when you're at big baseball event like this. A lot of championship games going on this afternoon and tonight. One away, runners at first and second. As Saunders stepped off just to check on the runner, runners momentarily. Now he'll step off once again. And we mentioned the, the high stolen base numbers for some of these Pirates players. It's pretty clear that they can affect the pitchers on the base paths. This one is bounced in. Runners will hold. Another thing with Saunders is he does lead the team, or second in the team in walks. Coming in the year, 27 walks and 40 in the third innings. So, again, that's going to play a part, and he's got to make sure he pitches to contact. And that pitch misses low and away for ball four. Third straight walk issued by Saunders, and the bases are loaded for the Pirates. Now they're going to have to have a little bit of a discussion here at the mound. This is a key situation early in the game, second inning. You have the bases loaded and one out. It's an opportunity where you don't want to let the game get away from you. You want to keep it in control. Obviously, the key here is try and get a strikeout so that you don't necessarily put at risk a chance for a run to score. So these are your situations where, okay, what's going to happen when you put the ball in play? Where are we going to go first? Who's going to take the situation? Um, is a double play going to be in order? So these are the things that coaches have to think about and relay that information on to everybody on the infield and to the pitchers. Obviously, the ideal situation defensively is you want that strikeout so you don't necessarily have to put uh, the opportunity for the Pirates to score here. And that was head coach Mark Prosky coming out to the mound, trying to keep his pitcher calm as Connor McKay steps in with the bases loaded, one out and bottom of the second inning. First pitch to McKay. Foul tipped into the glove, count is at 0-1. And there you go, be aggressive on offense, try and attack the first, first pitch and swing at it, give you an opportunity to try and grab that first run. 0-1 to McKay. Fastball strike, 0-2. This is just what Saunders needed. Absolutely, maybe, maybe that little discussion helped keep him uh, focused and and concentrate on getting this batter right here because you just got to go one at a time and try and get that second out before you get the third out. 0-2. Oh, Foul back behind home plate, and that hits the fence. So it'll remain an 0-2 oh count to Connor McKay. Dasbach at third, Sir at second, Murphy at first. Yo, two to McKay, just outside. He's trying to get him to chase there. He threw those first two pitches a little bit towards the outer portion of the play, just trying to get him to stretch a little bit further here. Saunders takes a long look in. Now the one two. That misses upstairs. Now two and two. All three base runners for the Pirates here in the bottom of the second have reached via the walk. And McKay here has battled back to a 2-2 count. Swing and a miss, strike three. Much needed strikeout for Cormac Saunders, and there's two down. There you go. You got the ideal situation here. You got the strikeout. So now play at any base. You don't have to worry about the base runners. You can focus on getting another strikeout or allowing a ball to be put in play to your defense. Here's Bobby Biggs, first pitch fastball for a strike, and Saunders seems to be back in that rhythm that he had in that first inning where he had a couple of strikeouts. Biggs looking to get a two-out hit here for the Pirates, put him on the board. That misses low. Despite the framing attempt. <laughs> <laughs> gotta try it at any level, no matter if it's a 13U Elite game or in the majors, you gotta try and do what you can to to coax the strike call from the umpire. 
Swing and a miss. Count at one and two. So Saunders now just one pitch away from working his way out of this jam. That's the key. You want to get out of a situation, even if you put yourself into it, but with those walks, if you can strike out to end the inning and not allow anybody else to score, kudos. We'll see how Biggs can protect with two strikes, two outs, bases loaded. Here's the pitch. That's high. Two and two the count. Biggs taps home plate. Looks towards Saunders. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Cormac Saunders works out of a bases loaded one out jam with two straight strikeouts. We'll head to the top of the third. No score between the Cangelosi Sparks and Pirates Baseball. You're watching Sports Broadcast Solutions. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. For those of you who would like to broadcast or live stream your event, or maybe make a highlight tape, but would like a sponsor to fund the event, SBS has a myriad of ways to advertise your sponsor during our broadcasts. We have commercials. We have on-air reads by the announcers. Albatross Physical Therapy and Wellness specializes in pain-free. We have graphics, and we have watermarks. Finally, Sports Broadcast Solutions can create a commercial for you or your sponsor. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. This is Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com and become part of the digital sporting world. Welcome back to Glen Ellen. No score in the 13U Elite Championship game between the Cangelosi Sparks and Pirates Baseball at the 13U level. So far, Tommy Georgelos for the Pirates has been dominant. Six up, six down with four strikeouts. He's been pitching quite well. Uh, we've had a little bit, obviously, a little bit of a hiccup there with those walks from Connor uh, Saunders in the first, or Cormac Saunders in that um, second inning. But as you mentioned, it's been a pitching performance so far uh, in this game. Maybe whoever scores first in this case might be the one team that if they can hold on to that lead will end up winning this game. And I think you tend to see that in championship games, some lower scoring affairs. You know, sometimes the nerves come in, and that can play to the advantage of the pitcher. First pitch to Matthew Prosky, swing and a miss, and count it 0-1. Jellos comes set, 0-1 pitch. Little bouncer out towards the third base line. Jorgelos picks it up and fires to first to get Prosky. You know, a lot of times pitchers have issues with those soft little dribblers, but Jorgelos played it perfectly Absolutely. there. Absolutely. We have a thick, very thick grass here on this field. That ball just deadened, but Jorgelos took his time, picked up the ball, and delivered a strong throw to first to get the out. Brings up Adam Dominowski. Swing and a miss at the first pitch. I can't tell you how many times, even at the major league level, you see a pitcher pick up that ground ball out in front of home plate and just fire it into right field. George Ellos played it perfectly there. Count at one and one to Dominowski. And sometimes practicing and perfecting those fundamentals are the keys between winning and losing games. Absolutely. As here's the one one. That's a strike on the outer part of the plate. One and two. George Ellos already with four strikeouts. And he's just in a rhythm out there. You can tell. He's got a lot of confidence on the mound. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Fifth strikeout for George Ellos. The only problem is he's limited to pitching three innings. Absolutely. That's, that's the dilemma you have. You can pitch out and get a strong effort from your starting pitcher, but he can't go a full load. Now we have Cormac Saunders, pitcher against pitcher here. Righty righty matchup. First pitch is a breaking ball that misses high. I was talking to some of the coaches for the Sparks before this game. They said Cormac Saunders is the team comedian. Funniest guy on the team, without a doubt. 
it helps to break out on the monotony, especially with these traveling teams. You, you know, going from place to place. You need a little bit of a of humor to help keep things light. Here's the one one. That's in there for a strike. One and two. Saunders stared at it for a moment. Maybe thought it was a bit outside. <laughs> maybe I'm going to get that call next. <laughs> inning. <laughs> he's I mean, he's keeping that in mind. Mental yeah. note for for the bottom of the third. So here's the one two swing and a miss. Strike three. A dominant three innings for Tommy Georgellos. Six strikeouts, nine up, nine down. We head to the bottom of the third. No score between the Cangelosi Sparks and Pirates Baseball here on Sports Broadcast Solutions. What's up, guys? It's Tommy and Jake from Baseball Zone. Uh, we're going to talk about how far you want to be from the batter while you're catching. So Jake's a lefty. I'm going to put my my arm out, a couple inches from his elbow, spread our feet a little bit. Straight down. That's where you properly want to be when catching. Running means being able to be free. It's just knowing that my body can do these things and it doesn't have to look a certain way in order to do these things. As long as I have a pair of shoes and my body, I can go out and do it. And I think that is the most liberating way for me to work out. I'm Hannah, and I'm a runner. Sparks and Pirates Baseball. New pitcher into the game for the Sparks, Adam Dominowski. Yeah, Dominowski has thrown the most innings of any pitcher on the Sparks, 51 and two-thirds innings. He actually started more games at 15, but the key, we mentioned strikeouts have been the big issue for this entire game so far. He leads the Sparks with 85 strikeouts. 85 strikeouts in 51 innings, 51 two-thirds innings. That's a, that's a high mark, so maybe we'll see a lot more Ks being put up on the board from the Sparks. Well, it's interesting as well to – you talked about the strategy earlier. We saw Giorgellos just dominate, mm -hmm. and he led Pirates in strikeouts all season long, but the Sparks putting perhaps their ace in in the middle of this contest and maybe trying to get that offense going in the middle of this game. It's all strategy. Like we mentioned, there are, are innings limits and pitch limits here, so coaches have to be aware of that and try to strategize on what's going to be the best method for them to win, especially in a title game. Nick Williams will lead it off for the Pirates. 11, one and two. This level, all players on the roster do bat. So here's the first pitch to Williams, that misses low. But a lot of times too, you like to put a player at the bottom of the lineup that can turn it over to the top part as here's the 1-0, and Williams hits a ball deep into left field, but the catch is made out there for the first out. Hit well off the bat, but the left fielder was right there in the right spot. He was able to come up and make the catch. Call that an atom ball. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Just hit it right at him, but he hit it on the screws. Back to the top of the order with George Ellis, left-handed hitter against the right-hander, Adam Dominowski. And he takes low and in. Rogelos walked in the first inning, stole second base, but he was stranded there. Hits a little looper into right field. This gets over the head of the right fielder. George Ellos motoring to second. He's being waved around to third, and he will get there with a triple. What a night. It's already been for Tommy Georgellos. Georgellos pulled that ball, and that ball almost went to the wall. It goes 265 to the straightaway right field, and Georgellos just got on his motor. He didn't even think about putting a stop at second. He was heading for three the entire way, and he got it. And he's at third with one out for Gavin Wilczewski, number two hitter in this Pirates order. First pitch, Wilczewski. Loops it into right field. That will score the first run of this ball game. As Georgellos comes in to score, Wilczewski with the RBI single. It's one to nothing, Pirates. Great back-to-back -back hits. Put the ball in play, and you're re rewarded 
with that run. Triple and a nice base hit. Here's Jory Crocker, the three hitter for the Pirates. First pitch is a breaking ball that misses high. We saw the first couple innings, the Pirates taking a lot of pitches, drawing some walks. More aggressive approach here in the third. Mm -hmm. Here's the pitch, runner goes, and no throw down to second, a stolen base for Wilczewski. This is a Pirates team that likes to run. And it was, it was, he had a great secondary lead and a great jump on that play. Made it tough for the catcher to even get the ball out of his catcher's mitt before he took second base. Pitch to Crocker, popped up foul, out of play. Now the Pirates ahead one to nothing in this WSBL Elite 13U Championship game. Pitch to Crocker, popped up to the right side foul, once again out of play, and Whoa. that did hit a car. That's a ding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody's heading to the body shop oh tomorrow. Oh, boy. <laughs> It's not good to have to leave a Tuesday night and have to go to the body shop on a Wednesday morning. <laughs> Pitch from Dominowski popped up once again to the right side out of play. Well, it's a good thing that uh, Jory Crocker's at the 13-year-old level because <laughs> yeah. I think... <laughs> You know, if this uh, maybe if this were a minor league game or adult professional baseball, he might have to pull out the checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing these parents should have car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the pitch. Once again, fouled back. Staying aggressive, and he's using up all the baseballs that are here in the park. <laughs> yeah, we don't have quite the same amount as uh, a major league or minor league game as our home plate umpire gets another baseball. So all these balls into the parking lot have to be retrieved. Will Chesky at second base. Strong lead, too. And Dominowski will step off to keep him honest. Here's the pitch, popped up to the right side once again, near the dugout, no play. There's a lot of foul territory. We were talking about that before this game. A lot of room for these youngsters to run and try and make a play on a ball. But um, I've been been very impressed with what Crocker's done at the plate. He's waiting waiting for his pitch. He's been, been behind, obviously. A lot of these foul balls have been going the opposite way, which means he's just waiting back, waiting for that right pitch to swing at. He's been able to stay alive. Throw back to second, and Wilczewski is back in there. Eighty foot base paths at this level. Here's the pitch. That misses upstairs, so Crocker continues to battle. Strong at bat so far, you know, fouling off pitches. He didn't even, even whiff at that, that pitch, and now he's rewarded with a full count opportunity. Payoff from Dominowski, fouled back once again. Great at bat here from Jory Crocker. Getting some props from head coach Philip Brunzio over at third base. Here's the pitch. Popped up to the right side once again. There is room this time. Catch is made for the second out. Waited back on that one. Like with his previous fouls off, Crocker was a little bit late on it, but again, a lot more foul territory. It was enough time as that ball hung up in the air for it seemed like 15 seconds. First base was able to camp under and make that catch. So two outs, bottom of the third. The Pirates with a 1-0 lead. The first pitch to Ronnie Murray in there for a strike. Murray struck out looking his first time up back in the first inning, but this will be the first time that he's facing Dominowski. The 0-1. 
Foul tipped into the glove, counted 0-2. Ronnie Murray had a 339 average coming into this one. But that's foul tipped into the glove for strike three to end the bottom of the third. But the Pirates get on the board a triple from Tommy Georgelos and a RBI single from Gavin Wilczewski. It's one to nothing as we head to the top of the fourth on Sports Broadcast Solutions. This is Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com and become part of the digital sporting world. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. For those of you that just want raw footage of your sporting event, but no play-by-play -play or color commentary, you just need us to live stream video from the event over the internet. We will live stream your event on YouTube on our Sports Broadcast Solutions channel. In addition, we also have a dedicated channel on YouTube for live streaming at SBS Livestream. And if you need multiple channels, we can utilize Facebook Livestream and Instagram Live on our channel as well. Options include commercials from your sponsors, professional scoreboard graphics are still available, and of course, yes, pre- and post-game interviews are available as an option if you want. We've been working really hard this whole summer and stuff. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. Welcome back to Glen Ellen Pirates Baseball with a one to nothing lead as we head to the top of the fourth. A new pitcher for the Pirates, Jory Crocker, after a dominant three innings from Tommy Georgelos. And Crocker was able to uh, have that strong at bat just before the end of this third inning. Uh, now he's going to go and try and prevent the Sparks from, from getting on the board and protect that one nothing lead. Brendan Keller will lead it off. For the Cangelosi Sparks, left-handed hitter against Crocker. First pitch, this is low and in. Crocker with a high fastball for a strike, count at one and one. Jory Crocker. At 56 strikeouts in 35 and two-thirds innings pitched. It's quite a nice uh, <laughs> quite a nice ratio for sure. So another pitcher that can get a lot of Ks as that fastball. Too hot to handle there for Keller. Two-strike count. Crocker looking for his first strikeout tonight. Swing <laughs> and a miss, strike three. So Jory Crocker strikes out the first hitter he faces. He's got strong poise, too. We saw it at the plate in the last inning. He, he has the confident look on the mound, for sure. Here's Julian Garcia Barriel. With one down here in the top of the fourth inning. Swing and a miss. A little change up mm -hmm. there from Crocker. Oof. Another swing and a miss at that fastball. The timing, you can just tell that Crocker's just completely upsetting the timing of Garcia Bernal. Very well. One, two. That misses high and away. Two and two the count. To Julian Garcia Barriel. Swing and a miss, strike three. As a team, that's four straight strikeouts for Pirates baseball. Georgellos continuing into Crocker. 
They've already struck out eight hitters combined. Back to the top of the order with Tyler Edmondson. For the Cangelosi Sparks looking to get something going. Off-speed pitch misses low and away. And it would help for the Sparks to get going quickly, and this is a, a spark plug for their offense in Edmondson, leading the team with 47 stolen bases. Takes a fastball for a strike here. But you obviously can't steal first base. you got to get <laughs> on. That's the key. It's going to be tough with Crocker the way he started out this fourth inning. Got to find a way to get on base. That's a high strike. <laughs> Very generous <laughs> call for sure. But Well, certainly a larger strike zone at this level, but that one may be a little bit higher than we've seen so far tonight. Swing and a miss, strike three. Crocker strikes out the side in his first inning of work. We head to the bottom of the fourth, Pirates baseball with a one to nothing lead over the Cangelosi Sparks. You're watching Sports Broadcast Solutions. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. For those of you that just want raw footage of your sporting event, but no play-by-play -play or color commentary, you just need us to live stream video from the event over the internet. We will live stream your event on YouTube on our Sports Broadcast Solutions channel. In addition, we also have a dedicated channel on YouTube for live streaming at SBS Livestream. And if you need multiple channels, we can utilize Facebook Livestream and Instagram Live on our channel as well. Options include commercials from your sponsors, professional scoreboard graphics are still available, and of course, yes, pre- and post-game interviews are available as an option if you want. We've been working really hard this whole summer and stuff. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. Welcome back to Glen Ellen. Pirates baseball with a one to nothing lead over the Cangelosi Sparks and the 13U Elite Championship game. Seeing quite a pitching performance today from the Pirates. Uh, four innings pitched, nine of the 12 outs via the strikeout combined from George Ellis and Crocker so far. Two dominant pitchers, but you have to give credit to the two pitchers for the Sparks. Keeping their team in this game, Cormac Saunders and Adam Dominowski. Dominowski gave up just one in the last inning. It was just two, two quick hits, and that, that's all you need if one run can hold with this, the, the pitching that the Pirates have done so far. Sean Stolfi will lead it off for the Pirates, and he takes this one low. Stolfi grounded out to third back in the second inning, his first time up. 1-0 pitch in there for a strike. Let's put the count at 1-1. One one. Light shining here in Glen Ellen. This 13U Elite Championship game. 1-1. One one. That's high. Both of these teams hoping to go home with a championship ring, a chance at a trophy, and the maybe glory. some bragging rights, too, for the rest of the summer. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Especially the, the first full summer we've had for these uh, for, for a while. Absolutely. Yeah, and great to have all of these kids back playing baseball, especially for travel teams. Even more difficult getting out on the road and great to see these teams back in action. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Stolfi goes down on strikes. Second straight strikeout for Dominowski, and there's one away here in the bottom of the fourth. Ryan Dosbach will step in. Dosbach walked his first time up in the second inning, was stranded at second base. Pirates had an opportunity in that second inning. They had the bases loaded, but Cormac Saunders worked out of trouble as Dosbach takes a strike. You have to capitalize on those opportunities because you can't take them for granted. You're not going to get the bases loaded with one out every time out. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. Hey, 
Tominowski has had a strong season for the Sparks. He's ahead in the count here against Dasbach. Looking for his third strikeout. Dasbach hits a hard ground ball, deflects off the glove of Dominowski and just dies in that infield grass. So an infield single for Ryan Dasbach. That was a shot. <laughs> that was that was hit really hard and Saunders was able to, or excuse me, Dominowski was able to slow that ball down, but again, we have that very, very thick grass on the infield. So as soon as that ball hit off his glove, it just flattened out. There's no way to make a play at first. Here's Noah Sir. Ground ball towards third. Scooped up, throw to first is in time. Well played over there by Brendan Keller at third base, and there's two away. Smart play. Double play could have been in order, but you take the share out and go to first on that play. You don't want to risk a situation where you throw throw the ball and it gets you know away from the second baseman and you allow that runner to advance or you get two on and aren't able to get that second out. So here's Murph, Michael Murphy, with a runner in scoring position for the Pirates. Murphy takes an off-speed pitch for a strike. Still just a one to nothing game. A one misses outside. Pirates have threatened in every inning, but they've only been able to score one. Already have left five men on base. That pitch is in the dirt. But we've seen strong pitching so far on both sides. You wonder how long it's going to keep up as this game progresses because, as you mentioned, these opportunities on the base pass don't come too often. That's in there for a strike to Michael Murphy. Has to protect here. Two-strike count with two outs. Bottom of the fourth inning, and the Pirates with a 1-0 lead. Fastball misses upstairs. Some fireworks going on in the background. Yeah, I guess just some leftovers from the 4th of July. <laughs> Or maybe they're celebrating the All-Star game. Who knows? <laughs> Dabinowski comes set. Misses outside for ball four. So Murphy will take first base. First and second for the Pirates with two outs in the bottom of the fourth. And pitcher and catcher are going to talk right here. They don't want to get this uh, too far out of play here. You have, have a one nothing deficit. You don't want it to grow out even further here. It'll be Connor McKay at the plate for this Pirates baseball team. They won both regular season meetings against the Cangelosi Sparks. First pitch to McKay misses low. One out to McKay. Loop to shortstop and caught for the third out. So the Pirates strand a couple of runners. Still just a one to nothing game as we head to the top of the fifth here on Sports Broadcast Solutions. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Let SBS broadcast your sporting event. We have experience and can generate excitement and permanent digital memories for your team. Tonight. That time, finally a goal for the Stampede! We have professional videographers using high-definition modern-day cameras, color analysts, and play-by-play -play announcers with state-of-the-art, classy graphical scoreboards to keep you updated. Plus, we have commercials to advertise your team, club, or sponsor, and us. Plus, we do pre-game and post-game interviews. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the post-game show brought to you by Marion Central Catholic. My name's Kyle Smith. But my name doesn't matter. These young ladies matter. It's senior night as the Hurricanes win a battle down the stretch, 48 to 46. Hi, I'm Carrie Kramer. Um, I swim 50 breast, uh, 50 free, and 100 back. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world.
Top of the fifth inning, one to nothing lead for the Pirates against the Cangelosi Sparks, 13U Elite Championship game in the WSBL. Jason Richard will lead it off against Jory Crocker at a dominant first inning of work. And if the Sparks are going to look to cut into this one nothing deficit, I think Richard's the guy. Leads the team in walks, leads the team in on-base percentage. 1-0, pitch is fouled back. 34 walks on the year and 138 plate appearances, leading to that 504 on on-base percentage. It's always key, <laughs> that 50-50 shot to get on base. And talking to head coach Mark Prosky before this game, as here's the pitch, swing and a miss. He mentioned that the reason that this team has played so much better in the postseason, the regular season, is just their ability to get on base, being more patient, drawing those walks. It's a simple concept, but they've done it a lot better in the postseason. Absolutely. And again, all that hard work that you've done during the regular season in this tournament has to pay off here with the championship on the line. All it takes is one to get something going here for the Sparks. Swing and a miss, strike three. Richard way out in front of that breaking ball. Fourth strikeout for Jory Crocker. That's now 10 strikeouts as a team for the Pirates. It's been a strikeout fest so far. We had uh, we have six on the side for the, uh, for the Pirates. As Liam Maroney fouls back the first pitch. One away here in the top of the fifth. The Sparks trying to even this one up. Question is, can they just get somebody on to get this rally going against Crocker? Good eye there by Maroney, holding up his swing at that pitch in the dirt. You would think it would help, given that these teams have met earlier in the year, that there's a little bit of familiarity. That you kind of have an idea of what each each guy on, on, on both teams can do. It's kind of surprising to see we're in this situation here with a one-run game. Swing and a miss. Maroney still alive in this count. But yeah, these two teams have seen each other twice in the regular season, now meeting in the championship game. Little pop up to the right side in foul territory. And Maroney will head back to the plate. A lot of foul territory, and it's tough for the first baseman considering how far he's got to play to respect the hitter on those dying pop ups. There's a lot of foul ground to cover, and it's a race to even get there. Bobby Biggs, the first baseman for the Pirates. Called strike three. Maroney down on strikes. Jory Crocker continues to roll. Seems like the Pirates, no matter who's on the mound, are striking out these sparks left and right. Five straight strikeouts for Jory Crocker. Six straight strikeouts as a team for Pirates baseball pitching. And that's coming off George Ellis with six strikeouts <laughs> and three innings pitched. We'll see if Griffin Arnold can turn it around for the Cangelosi Sparks. Just trying to figure out a way to get something going against Crocker, not an easy task. Swing and a miss and Arnold behind on that fastball. Yeah, it just looks like Crocker's in complete control on that mound. He's ready to fire as soon as the uh, sign is delivered. Swing and a miss at the high heat, and you elevate that fastball. I mean, that's the thing in baseball right now. They're saying get that fastball high, almost has that rising effect to the hitter. Crocker did so there. The one-two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Jory Crocker continues his dominance. Six straight strikeouts. Pirates baseball with a one to nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the fifth here in Glen Ellen. You're watching Sports Broadcast Solutions. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. For those of you that just want raw footage of your sporting event, but no play-by-play -play or color commentary, you just need us to live stream video from the event over the internet. 
We will live stream your event on YouTube on our Sports Broadcast Solutions channel. In addition, we also have a dedicated channel on YouTube for live streaming at SBS Livestream. And if you need multiple channels, we can utilize Facebook Livestream and Instagram Live on our channel as well. Options include commercials from your sponsors, professional scoreboard graphics are still available, and of course, yes, pre- and post-game interviews are available as an option if you want. We've been working really hard this whole summer and stuff. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. I started running in 2012, and as I signed up for races here in Phoenix, I didn't see a lot of men that looked like me, a lot of black men. So I connected with a couple of guys. I said, hey, what do you guys think about starting a black men run chapter here in Phoenix? So we've been going strong ever since. Running provides clarity. It's a sense of joy. It's a sense of excitement. <laughs> I'm happier and I feel a whole lot better after. I'm Rafael Ortiz and I'm a runner. Bottom of the fifth inning, Pirates baseball with a one to nothing lead over the Cangelosi Sparks in the 13U Elite Championship game here in the WSBL. Alongside Kamer Zaman, Connor Klingen here with you. And Kamer, it's been dominant pitching by the Pirates, but only one run. They've stranded quite a few runners. Absolutely. It was two hits. It was a triple and a short line drive into shallow right that brought in that run. First pitch to Bobby Biggs, misses. Biggs struck out his first time up in the second inning, facing Adam Dominowski. Swing and a miss there from Biggs. And another cut and a miss from Biggs, and he's down on strikes. So Dominowski with his third strikeout. And that brings up Nick Williams for the Pirates. First pitch is a breaking ball that misses outside, and head coach Phil Abruzio just said, like last time, Nick Williams hit a ball hard into left field. Unfortunately, it was just right to the left fielder. He pops this one up. Might be a play over at first base, but just not able to get there. Yeah, a lot <laughs> of foul territory here. And, and, and these infielders have to play back because you got to respect uh, the offense that the Pirates have here. So, and these balls are dying. They're not hanging up in, in the air for a long period of time to allow these infielders to play these foul balls. So by the time a first baseman or a catcher gets to that ball, it's already on the ground. Reminiscent almost of Oakland with yes. all the foul territory. As that's on the outside part of the plate for a strike. Or even old Dodger Stadium in the, in the aspect since obviously they've shortened the foul territory there, but used to be a lot of foul ground at Dodger Stadium. Uh, th that's challenging defensively, and also it can give new life to hitters. As Williams grounds it towards second, under the glove into right field, and a base hit. For Nick Williams, he's hit the ball hard twice tonight, and he's aboard with one away in the bottom of the fifth. Strong contact. As you mentioned, he hit that line drive to left, just perfectly played with the left fielder. Here, this opportunity of the second baseman wasn't gathered in the right spot, and the ball trickled right underneath his glove. Top of the order for the Pirates up here with Tommy Georgelos. He hit a triple back in the third, came around to score. First pitch is fouled. There might be room, and what a catch. Maroney, the catcher, makes the play, and George Ellis is retired. Maroney has been their go-to guy behind the plate this year. He's caught more innings than any other player on, on the uh, Sparks team, and he's showing off why he's uh, <laughs> got a good glove there behind home plate. First pitch to Gavin Wilczewski is fouled back, but... Liam Maroney making a nice catch on one knee there, and and he knew he had to hurry because you don't want to give Giorgelos new life up there at the plate. Absolutely, and that ball he was hit, struck very well, just a little bit late, and hung up there high in the air. That's one of those times when you swing under a ball, and that ball just flies and hangs in there. It gave Maroney a lot of time to get under it.
Chance here for Dominowski to get out of the inning and avoid giving up another run. The pitch to Will Chesky. Line drive into right field and caught. Nice play out there in the outfield to end the inning. So the Pirates strand one. We head to the top of the six. The Pirates with a one to nothing lead over the Cangelosi Sparks. You're watching Sports Broadcast Solutions. What's up, guys? It's Tommy and Jake from Baseball Zone. Uh, we're going to talk about how far you want to be from the batter while you're catching. So Jake's a lefty. I'm going to put my, my arm out a couple inches from his elbow, spread our feet a little bit. Straight down. That's where you properly want to be when catching. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. We broadcast sporting events for people of all ages, including adult leagues, high school leagues, and kids. Complete with professional-looking graphics, broadcasters, color analysis, and commercials. We do pre- and post-game interviews with the players. In addition, Sports Broadcast Solutions does highlight films, including college recruiting reels, highlight films you'd see on sports news programs, and just simply highlight films for fun. Sports Broadcast Solutions also provides raw footage and live streams if you'd like. Subscribe to us and listen to our professional talk videos about relevant topics in the pro and college ranks. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, contact us at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com and become part of the digital world. Welcome back to Glen Ellen, a one to nothing lead for Pirates baseball over the Cangelosi Sparks in the 13U Elite Championship game in the WSBL. Jory Crocker back onto the mound, six straight strikeouts and in two innings of work, and he'll face Tucker Henry to start this top of the sixth. Henry's the uh, strongest bat on the Sparks team, but even he is struggling to see what Crocker has on that first pitch. Yeah, a bit of a half swing, and also as you get deeper into the night, probably difficult to see the ball with the lighting here. 0-1 fastball painted on the outer part of the plate. Quickly 0-2 to Tucker Henry. The 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. That's seven straight strikeouts for Jory Crocker. This is This is domination. Tremendous. This is domination. <laughs> what is this, Jacob DeGrom out there? <laughs> well, the all-star game is going on in Denver right now, but we might be seeing a future all-star in the big leagues right here with the way Crocker's been delivering this, this ball these past couple of innings. Here's Jack Holland, and he chased the fastball high, and you can't blame him for swinging at a pitch like that because the way Crocker's been throwing, you just have to go up there ready to swing. You got to put the ball in play. You're playing from behind. You got to do whatever you can to get on base. 0-1, breaking ball. That misses outside. But Crocker can only throw three. We already saw Giorgiello's had six strikeouts in three innings. Two dominant pitchers. We'll see who the Pirates would bring in to throw the seventh. Another cut and a miss. And once again, Crocker with a two-strike count. He's just really in a groove out there. He seems loose, confident, no nerves at all in a championship complete game. Complete from the get-go. As soon as he's touched the, touched the mound the first time, he looked completely dominant. And even in his last at-bat prior to taking the mound, when he was fouling off pitch after pitch, he looked confident. He looked ready to go. Even though it didn't uh, lead to a positive at bat, it was a strong plate appearance. We'll see if Holland can get something going. That fastball misses high. Nicely done there by Jack Holland to hold off on the high heat. Mm -hmm. Tommy Ronnie, nothing through over there. That pitch misses low and in. So yeah. Holland maybe seeing a little bit of a back. fatigue here. You know, just dominant. You, you do tend to hit a wall even though you're, you're, you're going at 100 miles an hour in essence. You do have to hit a wall at some point. Maybe we're getting it here, maybe not. We'll see a 3-2 pitch here is pretty key for, for the Pirates. Huge pitch. So Sparks look to get a base runner against Crocker. 3-2, called strike three. Jory Crocker. That's eight up, eight up, eight down. <laughs> eight straight strikeouts. <laughs> You don't see that very often. <laughs> Not at all. Even at this great level, the 13U Elites, you don't see that quite often. 
Here's Matthew Prosky looking to get something going for the Sparks. First pitch from Crocker. Fastball strike. It's like the reaction time is so delayed. They think they're ready for it, and by the time they're ready to swing, it's the ball's already in the mitts. Yo, one. Breaking ball. Grounded through the middle for a base hit. Matthew Prosky, the first base runner of the night for the Cangelosi Sparks. And the Pirates deserve an ovation Absolutely. for carrying a perfect game, five and two thirds combined. Strong performance from Georgellos and Crocker so far. We're gonna have a substitute runner here. Um, at least the Sparks have something going here. Maybe they can snowball this for their efforts. And it's still just a one run game as here's Dominowski, swing and a miss. Dominowski struck out his first time up in the third. We'll see if Crocker's able to just move past that single. It looks yeah. like he's Quick doing delivery. pretty well so Quick far. Quick delivery <laughs> without the windup. He's ready to go. Crocker comes set. Now the 0-2. That misses low, and it gets by the catcher. So a runner into scoring position for the Sparks, and all of a sudden they are a Dominowski base hit away from tying this ball game. That's all it took, honestly, for the Pirates to get on. Two quick hits back to back. Maybe here you have a... You have that nice base hit, an advance on a wild pitch. Just get a hit here and you tie the game up. Jack Holland, the pinch runner, but there is strike three. No more perfect game, but nine strikeouts for Tory Crocker in three innings of work. Pirates baseball with a one to nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the sixth here on Sports Broadcast Solutions. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. For those of you that just want raw footage of your sporting event, but no play-by-play -play or color commentary, you just need us to live stream video from the event over the internet. We will live stream your event on YouTube on our Sports Broadcast Solutions channel. In addition, we also have a dedicated channel on YouTube for live streaming at SBS Livestream. And if you need multiple channels, we can utilize Facebook Livestream and Instagram Live on our channel as well. Options include commercials from your sponsors, professional scoreboard graphics are still available, and of course, yes, pre- and post-game interviews are available as an option if you want. We've been working really hard this whole summer and stuff. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. Bottom of the sixth inning here in the 13U Elite WSBL Championship game between the Cangelosi Sparks and Pirates Baseball at this 13U Elite level. What a dominant pitching performance from Jory Crocker. Nine strikeouts, just one hit allowed in three innings of work. They had a perfect game going into the sixth inning here. Uh, just got that little base hit that broke it up, and now Crocker has a chance to add to the Pirates' one nothing lead here. Dominated on the mound. Let's see if he can add to the lead on offense. Trying to get something going at the plate as well. He had a great battling at bat earlier in this game. First pitch is bounced in from Matthew Prosky. Jory Crocker looks like the type of player who will have a long baseball career as cut and a miss at the 1-0. He's got some strong potential for sure. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you're, you're young at 13. This is, you're still developing, and you want to eventually get that career going further and further. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss, 1-2. and two, But well, no matter what he does in his high school or maybe even potentially college or maybe even potentially professional career, this will be a night he may not forget in his baseball career. Yeah, it's not often you throw nine strikeouts and 
three innings, but as one of the coaches mentioned earlier in the year, he had eight strikeouts in a three inning performance. Uh, that was in the semifinal <laughs> of this turn of this same tournament as Crocker hits a pop up and it lands in no man's land and he'll beat it out for an infield single. Not only is he good, he has a little <laughs> bit of luck on his side. Absolutely. Too. <laughs> He's hitting the right spot on the infield where Neither the shortstop or the second baseman could get to it in time, and he was on his horse trying to get to first base. There's no way they can make a throw to get to Crocker at first. And Crocker gets got, back to first got just hit, in time. Got hit on that pickoff throw. Got to rub, rub some dirt on it in that sense. <laughs> That'll wake you up here late at night, <laughs> nearing the 10 o'clock hour. We'll see what Ronnie Murray can do. Still just a one to nothing ball game. Pirates looking for some insurance. Crocker is running. Pitch is high. The throw down to second. Not in time as Crocker easily steals second base. 46th of the season. Had 45 coming into this game. So now it's going to take us some time to poke some holes and enjoy Crocker's game. <laughs> Absolutely. So now a runner at second in scoring position with still nobody out in this bottom of the sixth. The Pirates looking for some insurance. And we don't know who's going to be pitching in the seventh. We know it's not going to be Crocker because he's pitched the three inning limit. So it's imperative that if the Pirates uh, get some insurance runs here. That pitch called for a strike, but but the Sparks trying to keep it a one-run game, and you have to give so much credit to this team that, that struggled in the regular season, battled their way to the championship, and have been right in the thick of this one as there's a cut and a miss for strike three, so a big strikeout for Matthew Prosky. Prosky's been a solid pitcher for the Sparks, 43 innings. 60 strikeouts in those 43 innings coming to play tonight. Sean Stolfi will step in. One out, man at second for the Pirates. Prosky trying to keep this a one-run game. Crocker's running once again. This is fouled back. Hit and run was on there. A little bit of a late swing there by Stolfi, but I like the approach here. Hit and run. Like I mentioned, one nothing game. You have a speedy runner in Crocker. Can easily get get home on a uh, on a base hit here. Pitch to Stolfi, popped up, foul territory back behind home plate. So now two strikes on Stolfi. As Prosky tries to work out of trouble here, give his team a chance in the top of the seventh inning. Prosky will step off. Looks in for the sign. Pitch to Stolfi. Bounced in. Crocker heading for third. He will get there without a throw. Strong run there by Crocker. And it was a good job there by Maroney to, to block that ball with the protector and keep Crocker at third base because a lot of space behind home plate. If that ball got past Maroney, there's good opportunity there for Crocker to take two bases on that play. The infield in now for the Sparks. Trailing by one, trying to keep it a one-run game. Cannot allow Crocker to score here. Pitch to Stolfi. Fly ball down the right field line, and that is foul. Prosky looks in for the sign, comes ready, and the pitch. That misses upstairs, so Stolfi doing a nice job battling in this at-bat. Yeah, you don't want to be over-aggressive, because even a ground ball perfectly placed, albeit, would still bring in Crocker. So you want to have a good approach at the plate. Here's the pitch. Stolfi loops a fly ball, and this one once again foul down the right field line, hitting it the other way, just Battling, staying alive in this at bat. It's a good approach. Just waiting back on that pitch from Dominos, excuse me, from uh, Prosky. 
We'll see what Prosky goes with here, trying to get the strikeout. Here's the pitch, bounced in, Crocker's heading home. The throw is not in time. Jory Crocker scores on the pass ball and it's two to nothing Pirates. That's exactly the play that I worried about earlier with Maroney behind home plate. He was able to block it the first time. This time around, he just wasn't able to get to it. And Crocker was going on first, first motion and he was able to take home and that's a huge insurance run for the Pirates. Roski's ready, the pitch. High for ball four, so Sean Stolfi with a walk, and two runs is some insurance, but the Pirates would certainly like more and still just one out in this bottom of the sixth. Got Dasbach here. Ryan Dasbach has reached base twice tonight. He walked in the second inning, singled in the fourth. Just the pitch, that misses low and away. Got to wonder here with one out, if you want to calm down Prosky here because he, got, he gave up that hit, had the errors here with the wild pitch. Pitch to Dasbach, that is fouled back. Stolfi was running. You don't want to get this game too far out ahead. And it's just a two-run game. It's very simple to come back. But as quick as the Pirates have scored that first run and here in the second run in this inning, you don't want it to balloon. Prosky's ready. And the pitch. That's high. Runner's going. And he is into second as the throw is high. Stolfi with the stolen base. And now he's in scoring position. Great steal there. The throw is just a little bit too long. A more accurate throw probably would have gotten him at second. Prosky steps off to get Stolfi back to second base. Pirates have done a lot of damage on the base pass. Fakes the throw back to second after stepping off the rubber. Dasbach called for time, <laughs> making sure that Stolfi could take some time to dust off after getting some encouragement from the bench. It's a nice little team approach here <laughs> to remind what's going on here. Throw to second, and Stolfi is back. Sometimes at the plate, you're in your own, your own mindset. You don't necessarily think about what else is going on when you have runners on base. The pitch, Dasbach lines a ball through the right side for a base hit. They will hold Stolfi at third base. And a wise decision there as there was a rocket in from right field. So now runners at the corners after the single by Dasbach, who has had a really nice night reaching base three times. Strong effort all night long. And here we go, we have a meeting at the mound here with runners at the corners. This is a crucial opportunity here because you can still have the double play in order. Um, but as, as we've seen in these uh, youth tournaments, sometimes these runners at first base will go on first movement on the very first pitch. So you have to be aware of that, not necessarily throw down to get that runner that's trying to steal second base. So maybe if you're strategizing here, what's going to happen on that first pitch, what you're going to do to approach the hitter at the plate. Still just one out as well. As the head coach for the Cangelosi Sparks, Mark Prosky out to the mound. Still a two-run game here. You just don't want it to get out of hand here, especially when you're going to have your last at-bats in the next half inning. Pirates with that two-run lead. Noah Sir looking to add to it with runners at the corners, still just one out in this bottom of the sixth inning. Pitch from Prosky. Sir takes a strike on the outer half. Noah Sir, 0 for 1 on the night. He walked in the second, grounded out back in the fourth. 0-1, grounded towards third. A fair ball, diving stop made by Keller, but he doesn't have enough time. 
as the third run comes in to score. Sean Stolfi on the infield single by Noah Sir. That was a tough play at third base. And the only play you could have in that spot was to throw it to first. Keller did a great job of keeping that ball in play, not letting it get past, because if it did, it could have been runners at the corners, runners in scoring position. First pitch to Michael Murphy is fouled back. Uh, Brennan Keller has played a very nice third base tonight for the Cangelosi Sparks. And he made the diving stop there, but just not enough time to get Sir at first base. So here's Murphy. Grounded towards second. Only play is to first, and they do make it for the second out, but both runners advance for the Pirates. You take the outs wherever you can get them. Don't force a double play situation. Get the out that you can get at first base. Now you have two outs. You don't have to worry about the runners that are in scoring position. Just focus on the guy at the plate. And that's uh, Mr. Connor McKay. McKay 0 for 2 on the night. Looking to give his Pirates baseball team some more insurance. They lead 3 to nothing in this championship game. Looking for a title in the 13U Elite Division. Here's the 1-0. McKay pops it up over our heads. And onto the other field. Nice complex here in Glen Ellen. A lot of baseball fields. Oh, I Some pickleball courts, <laughs> yeah. tennis courts. McKay. It's a fly ball, shallow center field. This is trouble, and it drops. Both runs come in to score. It's five to nothing. Pirates baseball. And this dugout is pumped up just three outs away from a championship. And they got a lot of insurance runs here. Unfortunate play. Uh, the ball that's popped up in the middle. That's where communication is key. And concentration, trying, especially in a night game situation. I'm sure a lot of these kids have not had a chance to play night baseball, especially during the summer. Here's Bobby Biggs. Definitely a challenging play there out in shallow center. Throw over to first, and McKay is back safely. Ground ball, fair down the left field line. And McKay will scoot into third base. Into second is Bobby Biggs. And the hit parade continues for the Pirates. That was hugging that third base line and just kept rolling. And that, the, again, with the, the high grass here on the field, that ball just died. And it allowed uh, for Biggs to just coast into second base. Here's Nick Williams with two more runners in scoring position. The Pirates have broken this one open in the bottom of the sixth inning. First pitch, Williams checks his swing, but it's called a strike. Count at 0-1. Pitch to Williams. That misses upstairs, and the count is at 1-1. One and one. I was looking at Jason Richard. He was the one that dropped that, that pop-up in shallow center field. He's, the body language, you can tell it's affecting him as this inning has, this half inning has progressed. Um, it's, it's one of those things as a young player you got to shake off. As that one is bounced in, here comes McKay. He will score to make it six to nothing. Biggs into third. And the Pirates have added five in the bottom of the sixth inning. We're seeing that snowball effect here where you're getting hit after hit or, in this instance, a wild pitch or and another wild pitch, allowing these runners to advance further and further. And it's, it's getting that feeling defensively like this half inning's never going to end. We're not going to get a chance. Williams hits a fly ball into shallow right, and it is caught. 
on a basket catch to end the bottom of the sixth. We head to the top of the seventh. Pirates baseball with a six to nothing lead, looking to clinch a championship in the top of the seventh inning. You're watching Sports Broadcast Solutions. Missing your child's sporting event just plain stinks. But you don't have to worry about that anymore, thanks to Sports Broadcast Solutions. SBS is a live broadcasting network, as well as covering your on-demand needs, recruiting videos, highlight reels, and much, much more. We can broadcast live to any website, and we also post as much on-demand content as you need. For more information about SBS, check out our website at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. For those of you who would like to broadcast or live stream your event, or maybe make a highlight tape, but would like a sponsor to fund the event, SBS has a myriad of ways to advertise your sponsor during our broadcasts. We have commercials. We have on-air reads by the announcers. Albatross Physical Therapy and Wellness specializes in pain-free. We have graphics, and we have watermarks. Finally, Sports Broadcast Solutions can create a commercial for you or your sponsor. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. Welcome back to Glen Ellen Pirates Baseball with a 6 to nothing lead in the 13U Elite WSBL Championship game against the Cangelosi Sparks. Sparks look to make a comeback effort against Gavin Wilczewski, the new pitcher for Pirates baseball after great performances from Tommy Georgelos and Jory Crocker. Only one hit allowed by Pirates pitching so far tonight. And Wilczewski. Dominant oh. performances, like you mentioned, from Georgelos and Crocker. We'll see if Wilczewski can uh, finish it off here. And he's pouring in strikes as well. That one misses outside to Cormac Saunders. Give Saunders credit, did a nice job starting this game off for the Sparks. Really kept this Cancelosi Sparks team in this game as Saunders grounds this to the right side and foul. But the story of the night has been Pirates baseball pitching. They've allowed just one hit. Swing and a miss. Saunders down on strikes. Another strikeout for Pirates baseball pitching. That is 16. It's been an incredible showing so far tonight. And pitching, it's, it, it, saves, it stays true no matter what level of baseball, youth level, or the majors, strong pitching will lead you to winning. And we're seeing it here tonight with the Pirates. Brendan Keller will step in. First pitch misses upstairs. Count is at 1-0. Keller's made some nice plays at third base tonight. Cut and a miss at that high fastball. This Pirates baseball just two outs away from a 13U elite WSBL championship. That pitch misses low. Called for a strike. It's Brendan Keller looks to stay alive against Gavin Wilczewski. Called strike three. Another strikeout for Wilczewski. That's two straight strikeouts and Pirates baseball just one out away from a championship. It's been a strong performance out there. Sean Stolfi going out to the mound, talk to Wilczewski. Ryan, we got one more out. Let's get it going here. And uh, one out away from a championship for the Pirates. Here's Julian Garcia Burriel, a six to nothing lead for Pirates baseball. First pitch, that's inside for ball one. 17 strikeouts for Pirates baseball pitching. 1 0 pitch, a wave and a miss, and the count at one and one. Garcia Barriel trying to keep his team alive in this championship game. A great season for the Cancelosi Sparks making it to the championship as the 1-1 misses high. 
Yeah, I mean, even even tonight, just getting to a championship game is a strong effort, especially with the way the Sparks got into the into this tournament. Two one, cut on and miss. Pirates baseball one strike away from a title. Well, Chesky comes set the pitch, called strike three. Pirates baseball are the 13U elite WSBL champions with a six to nothing win over the Cangelosi Sparks. And why not <laughs> throw some water in the air after a 13U elite championship and a dominant pitching performance? This was the elite tournament. We saw some elite pitching out there tonight from the Pirates with Georgellos, Crocker, and Wilczewski. Um, this this is a, a championship game that they'll be remembering for the rest of their lives, no doubt about it. They allowed just one hit, but again, give credit to the Cangelosi Sparks. A great season making it to the championship game. They battled throughout. This was a one to nothing game heading to the bottom of the six. So give this team a lot of credit making it to the championship. But ultimately, Pirates baseball coming away with a victory. Sparks had an excellent showing tonight. Started out strong, low scoring affair. It was a one run game up until that sixth inning. So they were in it. And credit to them for making it a competitive showing tonight. The Pirates are just overly dominant with that pitching. And sometimes when you have face dominant pitching, you just have to tip your caps. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back on the post-game show. Pirates baseball with a 6 to nothing win and a 13U Elite WSBL championship. You're watching Sports Broadcast Solutions. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Let SBS broadcast your sporting event. We have experience and can generate excitement and permanent digital memories for your team. Tonight, that time, finally a goal for the Stampede. We have professional videographers using high-definition modern-day cameras, color analysts, and play-by-play -play announcers with state-of-the-art, classy graphical scoreboards to keep you updated. Plus, we have commercials to advertise your team, club, or sponsor, and us. Plus, we do pre-game and post-game interviews. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the post-game show brought to you by Marion Central Catholic. My name's Kyle Smith, but my name doesn't matter. These young ladies matter. It's senior night as the Hurricanes win a battle down the stretch, 48 to 46. Hi, I'm Carrie Kramer. Um, I swim 50 breast, uh, 50 free, and 100 back. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, we are at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital sporting world. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Instead of spending hundreds or thousands with all these college recruiting sites, let us put together your college highlight reel. For just a fraction of your potential college scholarship and significantly less than these recruiting services, we got this. In addition, we put together highlight reels for teams, including high school, your club team, or travel team. Well, my teammate gave me a great pass, and I just took it. Other teams slashed me, took the opportunity. Saw where the goalie was weak, and I just shot it there. Solon, O'Connor, and Marsh back on defense. And Marsh gets a blowout. We got a breakaway, a 2 on 0. A shot, and his goal! So, 3-3. Three to three. The power play was officially over. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital world. This is Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com and become part of the digital sporting world. Our grandmothers, they always tell us, you have to get up before the sunrise, you have to run. You run east. You greet the sun and say your prayer. I am from Navajo Nation and the Donato Nation. Running, you know, it's sacred for us. I'm out here doing this, representing my family, my kids. They're one of the reasons why I'm out running. I want to be here longer for them to let them know you can do anything. This is Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone. Check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com and become part of the digital sporting world.
our grandmothers, they always tell us, you have to get up before the sunrise. You have to run. You run east, you greet the sun, you say your prayer. I am from Navajo Nation and the Tha'anatham Nation. Running, you know, it's sacred for us. I'm out here doing this, representing my family, my kids. They're one of the reasons why I'm out running. I want to be here longer for them to let them know you can do anything. It was uh, an absolutely amazing week. We flew out uh, all the way from Los Angeles uh, out here to Florida and uh, Game Day USA. The coaching, the staff uh, exceeded our expectations, exceeded my expectations. Uh, the baseball was very competitive. Uh, the kids were, were all great kids, the families, the parents. Uh, truly a uh, memorable weekend and uh, one uh, Nathan and I will uh, remember for a long time. Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. Instead of spending hundreds or thousands with all these college recruiting sites, let us put together your college highlight reel. For just a fraction of your potential college scholarship and significantly less than these recruiting services, we got this. In addition, we put together highlight reels for teams, including high school, your club team, or travel team. Well, my teammate gave me a great pass, and I just took it. The other team slashed me, took the opportunity. Saw where the goalie was weak and I just shot it there. Solon, O'Connor, and Marsh back on defense. And Marsh gets a blowout. We got a breakaway at 2 on 0. A shot and his goal! So, 3 to 3. The power play was officially over. Whatever your sports broadcast needs, check us out at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Check us out and become part of the digital world. Hey guys, what's up? It's Tommy here at Baseball Zone. I'm going to talk to you guys about the squatting T drill today. We have our T. You could do this anywhere, your living room, the field, anywhere. So we're in our squat, we're at the top of the T, we're in our ready position. We're going to focus on catching the ball now. We're simulating a pitcher throwing to us. We catch it, we rake, we bring the right leg through, and we're ready to throw. Our knees are bent, we're low. 20 to 25 times. Ready to throw. Just like this. Just like that. See how I'm straight? Ready to throw down to second base. The teacher will help you throw down to second base quicker. Game show brought to you by the WSBL. Connor Klingen here with you. Joined by Tommy Georgelis and Jory Crocker, champions in the 13U Elite with a 6 to nothing win. Tommy, we'll get started with you. You started this game on fire, six strikeouts in three innings. What was working for you on the mound? It was my fastball. It was going really well, and a little bit of my curveball, but it was mostly my fastball. And Tommy, as well, you hit a triple, scored a run. Take us through that at-bat when you hit the triple into right field. I was just waiting for my pitch. He came right down the middle, and I just took it to the right field, and I got a triple out of it. So Tommy Georgel is getting it done on the mound at the plate, but Jory Crocker as well, just dominant on the mound. Nine strikeouts and three innings of work. How did you basically, I mean, I think the only question we ask is, how can you do that, nine strikeouts and three innings? I, know, I just really confident in my fastball and a little bit of my curveball. And Jory, actually right before you took the mound, you had a long at-bat, a lot of foul balls. Did that, you ended up making it out, but it was a great at-bat. Did that in a way help you transition over to going to the mound? Yeah, it did. It gave me a little bit more fuel to strike on nine batters in a row. <laughs> and Jory, it was nine straight strikeouts. How does it feel to be a champion? It feels great. And Tommy, how does it feel to win the WSBL Elite Division? It feels great too. And so, <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Pirates baseball with a six to nothing win in the WSBL Elite Championship game for Kamar Zaman, Connor Klingon, our great cameraman, Carlos Rodriguez, who did two games, give him a lot of credit tonight. Once again, your final score Pirates baseball six, Cangelosi Sparks zero. And Pirates Baseball, the 13 U Elite Champions of the WSBL. Missing your child's sporting event just plain stinks.
but you don't have to worry about that anymore. Thanks to Sports Broadcast Solutions. SBS is a live broadcasting network, as well as covering your on-demand needs, recruiting videos, highlight reels, and much, much more. We can broadcast live to any website, and we also post as much on-demand content as you need. For more information about SBS, check out our website at sportsbroadcastsolutions.com. Sports Broadcast Solutions, a broadcasting network for everyone.